Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Today is Wednesday, September 7th. Welcome to my comic shop in North Kingsville, Ohio. This is Captain's Comics Toys, and this just in. Your 11 o'clock comic shop news. I am your host, Rikus, and as always, Dr. Ben, local cartoonist and kayfabe fanatic. How's it going this week? How was your was Labor Day weekend? Yeah, it was pretty good. The store was closed for a little bit. We had a little bit of time off, and then that time off, I uh, assembled a golf team to uh, represent Captain's Comics Toys and in a golf outing. To, the benefits helped uh, develop a park in North Kingsville, Ohio. Right on. Did so. you guys? Do you do you guys have like shirts? Because like, yeah, we, we were the only team there that had uh, official shirts made up for this. So we could stuck oh. out like a sore thumb, but it was it was fun. Did you guys? Was there? Was it like a? Was it a ranked golf outing? It or? was ranked. We. I don't know how we were replaced, but we did not get first yeah. or tenth. Well, that's. <laughs> I think we were somewhere in between, maybe. Okay. I guarantee you would have been, come in last if you'd had me on there. <laughs> not a, not a golfer, or not a good golfer. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you do over the Labor Day? Well, uh, as usual, I made comics. You know, I, uh, I just I finished drawing and coloring. Uh, a, a story I did with my friend Peter Hansel that is for his, his Gotham newsstand anthology. He's got a comic shop down in Texas and it's their 10th anniversary so he's putting together a, you know, a comic with me and a couple other people doing, doing strips in there. Oh, so cool. This is the last few days of the, uh, the Kickstarter for it so excited. I'm you know, coming in just under the line, finishing all my artwork there. But uh, nice, Peter. Peter's got a. He's pretty patient. He's a good guy. I can't wait to see it. It's it's gonna be fun. I'm I'm pretty happy with it. It's uh it's kind of it's supposed to be like a a story in the '60s that's set in the '40s. It's it's kind of it's it's a bit all it's it's pretty crazy is what I can say. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's uh. That's what I got, and then I and then I think. <laughs> well, I stocked uh, today's comic books on the shelf, so they're all ready for your uh, picking pleasures. Um, first off, I, I'm pretty excited about uh, All Out Avengers number one. Um, it's introducing an all new Avengers series that starts in the middle of an explosive action that races to a shocking climax: an alien attack, a missing piece of wormhole tech. A city warped, its citizens transformed into hideous creatures loyal to an empress from far from the far side of the universe, and a certain Captain Marvel looking to her fellow Avengers with mur murderous intent. Huh. Plunge into this action and take a deep breath because you will not be allowed up for air. <laughs> that air, air is always what we need too. That's how. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited about Black Panther number nine because it's starting off a new story. Uh, it's book one. Black Panther has returned to the Avengers, but after the recent events in Wakanda, Captain America isn't convinced that that T'Challa's head is in the game. So, a dangerous new galactic interloper shows up called the Colonialist, and he wants to take over Earth. Trial is going to be tested like he's never been tested before in this. Hmm. Pretty excited. It's written by John Ridley. It's art by German Peralta. I don't have the nerve to test T'Challa. Yeah, how could you? How yeah. could you? So, excited for it. And, yeah. And also excited for the, uh, you know, the next, you know, the uh, Return of Wakanda. I mean... Oh, the movie. Yeah. yeah oh, after, yeah. After I've seen uh, trailers for that. Some Mariner. What do you think about that? I'm, I'm always down with Namor. You know, it's, I'm excited to see him come to the screen. And yeah. you know, it's gonna be a, uh, it's gonna be kind of bittersweet to go back to the to to Wakanda. You know, rest in peace, Chad Mc, Chadwick Boseman. But yes. you know, it's what he would have wanted. He was a professional. That was mm -hmm. the one thing that stuck out with me is that he was just, you know, his head was completely in the game. He was T'Challa as far as I'm concerned. Exactly. So, um, hmm. I have Alien number one. Uh, diving deep into the uh, the what are they called? Uh, 
Oh, the Xenomorphs. Xenomorphs. The Xenomorphs. D- diving deep into the Xenomorphs uh, mythology here. Uh, Philip Kennedy Johnson and Julius Ada launch a new alien epic for Marvel. Man, machine, and most terrifying creature in the universe. It's an express elevator to hell. <laughs> <laughs> I've been on the highway to hell before, man. But <laughs> yeah, take an expressway. That's that's the the fastest route. I'd rather <laughs> climb the stairway to heaven, if you ask me. Yeah, yeah. I'm not not looking to go downwards there. Let's but uh, <laughs> these people will. I mean. A small colony of simps have settled in a secret on the backwater moon when a company of United System soldiers come to them for help retrieving a biotechnology on a hostile planet that could be the key to saving humanity. The Sith must decide whether the prospect of peace between man and machine is worth the risk of betrayal. Sounds pretty good. I'm, I'm excited to see see the aliens, the xenomorphs, if you will, in, yeah. the, in the Marvel Universe now. Excited. Should be fun. It'd be a good uh, little hint in the MCU if they like drop little hints that they're uh, yeah. same universe there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I don't want to see them fully indulge in it, but just kind of like little <laughs> little clues, maybe. About some, like Spider-Man versus the Xenomorphs. Yeah, I don't uh, want to see that, but maybe <laughs> pay homage to it somehow. I could. All right, all right. What about? Uh, there's, I am excited about because it's the 30th anniversary of the 2099 universe. So Spider-Man 2099, Exodus Omega, number would, would, one. Would that still be 2099? It, well... If it's the 30th <laughs> anniversary of 2099... It would be like 20... 2030? No, 20... I'm not good at math. <laughs> I'm not good at math on the spot. <laughs> it's... Uh, <laughs> Should we redo that one? <laughs> I don't know. I think I think we're uh, I think we're good. <laughs> Maybe just cut out the. Or we ask if we should redo it. <laughs> okay, I shouldn't have said that. that was, uh, so as I was saying, this is the 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 final conclusion for this uh, explosive storyline, and the battle for the Celestial Garden begins with Spider-Man versus Norman Osborn, the X-Men versus the Cabal. To armies, to deadly enemies, and the keys to the 2099's future are up for grabs. It's a it's a brawl, a brave new tomorrow for 2099. Stuff. It, that that doesn't make sense. Is it really 2099 still, or is it 20 2130? I think we have to ask the experts on that one. Yeah, we're gonna have to write Steve Orlando. The 30th anniversary, 2099. That's like saying I'm 17 years old on my. Going on my 17th anniversary of being 17 or something. Right, I right. Know. This is like my, my 20th anniversary of turning 21, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess it could work. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what else? Is there any other... What's uh, what's the rest of the Marvel stuff coming out? Um, We have on the shelf today, Immortal X-Men number 6, Captain America Sentinels of Justice number 4, Wolverine number 24, uh, One Shot of X-Men and Moon Girl number 1, New Mutants number 29, Ghost Rider number 6, Star Wars number 27, The New Fantastic Four number 4, Moon Knight number 15, Marauders number 6, and Avengers, X-Men, Eternals, Death to the Mutants number 2. Two, right on. What do we got for DC? Uh, Well, I'm excited because Libra Mejo is coming out with... Batman, Dear Detective, number one. Uh, there's, you know, the Libra Mejo is he's an iconic artist. Is, is it a, a deer animal detective, Batman? <laughs> is it a deer bat, or is it like a, a love letter, like deer? More like his his like love letter to Batman or, okay. or Bruce Wayne, like a know. deer Batman. Right, okay. right, yeah, not like All right. not like a dear John letter, dear okay. Bruce letter, I guess. I, I kind of want to see a deer bat, you know. With there antlers and bat flying around with deer antlers. There is bat cow. <laughs> <laughs> Created by a uh, friend of the show, Art, Art Baltazar. Bat, bat cow's a good... <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so this... Anyway, so Batman Deer Detective number one. It's... Uh, you know, we're going to find out what happens when this, this comics art powerhouse meets one of the greatest, most exciting heroes of all time. It's, uh, it's a prestige art book. 
and it's it's collecting a lot of a lot of his previous arc Batman covers, but he's weaving them together into a new Batman storyline that he's written. And his artwork's amazing. That's what I'm saying. It's I'm I'm excited to see what he does with it today. So, what are you looking at? Um, Batman Nightwatch number one of five. It, it's kind of like a more of a kid, more kid friendly Batman version, right. I guess. Right. After a massive breakout of at Arkham Asylum, Batman and his team are on a mission to bring all the escapees back. First on the list is Clayface. Using his social media, using her social media, Batgirl traps into an informal network to track the villain throughout the city. This inspires Penny One to create a more organized network of inform informants and spies called Nightwatch. Written by Joseph Torres with yeah. art by Urch Owen. You know, it, it seems like they're they can't keep people in Arkham Asylum. It's this this has got to be like the what, the thirtieth anniversary <laughs> of an escape or something. <laughs> it's like they they escape out of Arkham Asylum like every other week, basically. I don't. <laughs> it, it's, it's it's like a Groundhog Day. Yeah. <laughs> and another bra massive break out at Arkham Asylum again. <laughs> Uh, you know, the other thing I'm excited about with DC this week is the Sword of Azrael, number two of six. Uh, this is book two, The Vengeance of the Poor Fellow. Vengeance has arrived to capture Brielle, the young woman who has come to Azrael for help. But Azrael won't let this stand. He will fight back against Vengeance and her forces. But will he be able to keep the murderous programming of the system at bay? And we're going to find out if Brielle is all that she seems or if she's hiding secrets that could shatter Jean Paul Valley forever. All of this, as Azrael's foe, the poor fellow, pulls the strings. Mm. It, it just, you know, it just, it makes me think of uh, Bella Lugosi just shouting, just, just, oh yeah. Pull the strings! Pull the strings! I really love those Ed Wood uh, movies. It's, it's, it's classic. It's classic. <laughs> a lot of people don't like Ed Wood. I don't know. I think he was a. Uh, Brilliant, <laughs> horribly brilliant film up artist. It all works. <laughs> it all works. You know. <laughs> <laughs> what else we got coming out from DC this week? We have Batman number one twenty seven, Batman Beyond Neo Year number six of six, Black Adam, The Justice Society Files, Adam Smasher number one one shot, uh, Dark Knight of Steel. Tales from the Three Kingdoms, number one. That's also a one shot. The one shot. Flashpoint Beyond, number five of six. New Champion of Shazam, number two of four. Uh, Poison Ivy, number four of six. A lot of miniseries and one shots for DC to this week. Right on, right on. You want indie books this week? I'm excited about uh, Ninja Turtle. <laughs> in. Yeah. <laughs> okay. In indie books this week, I'm I'm pretty excited about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one thirty two, written by Sophie Campo with art by Pablo Tanica. Uh, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are continuing to train under the tutelage of the Shredder in Northampton. The techniques that they are learning are taking a bizarrely arcane turn. So we're going to find out if Michelangelo, Donatello, Raphael, Leonardo, and Jenica will learn how to master and control the dark ninja arts, or if they'll be consumed by them. One of the things that's for certain in this is that if they're ha going to have any chance of success, they'll need to seek out a life from the past to help guide their way. So yeah. can't go wrong with the turtles. Uh, no. I'm, I like that uh, you know, Sophie Campbell, you know, she went from, from drawing them for so long, and now she's, you know, kind of like stepped up to that next, like she's writing the stories and, and letting, letting other people come in and draw for her. Yeah. It's fantastic stuff. Um, if you had superpowers and you were a teenager and you can only use your, ten, your superpowers for 10 minutes a day, <laughs> I mean, how would you do, how would you, uh, that would take a lot of planning, right? Yeah. You had 10 minutes a day 
to use your superpowers. I'd, I'd have to have a stopwatch or something on me constantly. Okay. Right? Well, <laughs> in a new comic book, uh, Erratic Recharged, uh, I think this is his second miniseries now, Recharge Complete, the teenage hero with superpowers that only work for 10 minutes a day is back to save the world again as he navigates even more pressing perils, young love, bullies, a broken family, and a gauntlet that is high school. This time, young Oliver Leaf is teamed with a barbarian princess who claims to be from another dimension. Spinning from the pages of the resistance, erratic, combines electric action teen drama and pure comics funny, pure comics funny, written by and drawn by Kiri Andrews. Oh yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying, like, uh, ten minutes. Yeah, that's, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you would do, that would just, and just that, would, that would go by too fast. Ten minutes out of the day to have your powers. Well, if you wait till midnight and use your your ten minutes at the end, you can possibly get twenty minutes <laughs> of full functioning superpowers. I don't know yeah. if he gets pick his ten minutes. I mean, you yeah. do like four minutes at, at a time. And oh, that's a good point. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. You could just do like a minute of like. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I'm. I, you know what I'm really excited about this week that's coming out is uh, is Starhenge Dragon and the Boar number three of six written and drawn by Liam Sharp. Uh, Mar Merlin and Uther go to battle in Hibernia before stealing the giant stones off of Mount Kilaros with the help of Cernunos. I'm no good with these old-timey pronunciations. <laughs> Somebody else is, you know, by all means, but... <laughs> we apologize if we butcher someone's name. Yes, this is how. This is how I talk. This is what you get. <laughs> uh, Amber and Daryl are going to visit Stonehenge and then later face an unexpected horror. You know, I just I just finished reading uh, season two of Green Lantern that Grant Morrison wrote with Liam Sharp drawing it and coloring it too. He learned how to color midway through there, and I mean his art is just just stellar. I mean, you look at it; it's like we said before that that painterly aspect to it. It's that's what he's yeah. got going on, and the rumor is that he's going to start working on uh, Grant. <laughs> he's going to start working on. Exo Man of War from Valiant Comics. Oh wow! After he's done with this, so I'm in is, for it. Is, it's still Valiant now, right? It, there's a time where it went from a claim to <laughs> something else, and now was it's back to Valiant, but still published underneath Dynamite, I think, right? Was there was there I, another one after a claim? I don't know. I think Dynamite. I'm not sure. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to check my back issues on that. I just yeah. I've got I I've got a bunch of the Blood Shots and Exo Man of Wars and Magnuses and. Shadow yeah. Man's. So. Valiant definitely been through the rocks a couple times. To it's a dirty secret, but I mean, it's a good. They make good books. I don't I'm, care. I'm glad they're coming back out with more of their characters because <laughs> Valiant's just a g good rock to keep down. That's what I'm saying. It's yeah. can't go wrong with them. They're fun. Yeah. Liam Sharp drawing stuff too. I mean, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. For my next comic book, I'm I'm kind of excited about it because. Uh, this speaks kind of personal to me. Uh, over the weekend on Labor Day, it was pretty quiet here. I had to come into the store to get some stuff done, and it was pretty late at night. And it, I, I thought I heard some things going you, on. In you here. did. You did text me about hearing some weird noises. Yeah. Well, this comic uh, book coming up from uh, Dark Horse, Shock Shop Number One. It's a four-issue miniseries. It follows uh, a comic shop. Uh, host that tells thrilling tales of terror to oh, yeah. to whoever would listen. It's uh, Colin Bunn, Danny Lockhart, Hart, Lockhart, and Layla Leach present a brand new horror anthology flip comic taking place in a haunted comic book shop with twisted retailer filled with tales of terror sure to leave you with the lights on. In families after a painful divorce, Trevor rents a house and tries to rebuild his life. Soon he discovers that his house appears to be haunted by more than one spirit, and the creatures begin feeding on Trevor's feelings of anger and guilt. In something in the woods, in the dark, a hus husband and wife going through a rough time go on a camping trip with a few friends. As they track farther into the forest, they realize that 
they're being stalked, something in the woods starts killing the campers, and it may have ties to campers more than any of them realize. Hell yeah. It's a flip book. I love, I love flip books. I don't, you know. I love terrifying <laughs> retailers telling stories to, to kids. I know. If, 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 it, <laughs> if it was a haunted comic shop in a, in a former <laughs> bank with a haunted vault, I would <laughs> I don't know if I'd be able to return here. I don't know. I, I, I definitely <laughs> wouldn't be here overnight. Be too much. Yeah. <laughs> well, the rest of the indies, I, I got to take a look at your uh, your box there. We've got uh, Artist Elite Presents number two, yeah. Highball number one of five, Vanity number two, Godzilla versus the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers number five, Transformers: The Best of Bumblebee, which is just it's a one shot and it's got I looked I looked through it. It's got a bunch of stories from 1984 Bumblebee comic or Transformers comics. All whipped like 2017, 2019. It's, you know, it's the best of Bumblebee. Nice. Double O Seven, number two, which is a you know James Bond. It's written by uh, that J- what's his name Philip Philip Kennedy there, who wrote the the Alien book. Yeah. And that's I'm excited. I, I'm hoping that they could do like a Double O Seven Aliens crossover. Yeah, I always liked the uh, original art uh, writer. Was it Ian Fleming or something? Oh yeah, like that? yeah. No, the good the original ones are good. Yeah, the, the movies and you know, it was good. Can't get wrong with Double O Seven. Yeah. Uh, a town called Terror, number six from Image Comics. Trailer Park Boys in the Gutters, number one. Spawn, number three hundred and thirty-three is out this week. Twig, number five of five is out. Uh, you got that Art of Battle Toads hardcover book. Oh yeah. <laughs> I I'm I'm with you. you. Can't everyone loves the Battle Toads? I mean, I don't know how many people out there beat the game, but uh, <laughs> I think it's almost near impossible to beat. I played that for like hours and hours, days as a kid. Yeah, I'm. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Uh. Astonishing Times is out this week. It's another trade paperback. Uh, Basilisk number 11 is out. Cyberpunk 27, 2077 Blackout number 4 of 4 is out from Dark Horse. Uh, Golden Rage number 2 of 5 is out. Lego Ninjago Garmageddon number 4 of 5. Magic the Gathering number 18 is out. And The Walking Dead Deluxe, number 46, is out this week. It's, it's new with all the new colors. Well, it's an old story with the new coloring. Right, right. Like with added material, I think. Yeah, they have like a, a commentary or something. Yeah, sort. creator commentaries from Robert Kirkman, Charlie Adler. It's a fun look back at the book, definitely. Yeah. A lot of people out there can be turned off by black and white books. Or if they can't afford the original ones. Yeah, though. like issue one is going for you know, a little bit, a little yeah. bit of cash. It's gone up. It's gone up in price, definitely. Yeah, but so you know those people that that just look for color books, we know who you are. We have a copy of Walking Dead for you. Come and get it. <laughs> uh, so that's that's all the rest of the indie comics we got this week. But uh, in case you uh, missed last week, there was a couple comic books out there that uh, if you want to take a closer look, you wanna. I think we're gonna hear a little bit from uh, Manny. Already texted me. He's uh, he's sending his review of Ant Man and of Ant this week. So let's take it's, a look. It's texted you is coming out now. He's ready. He's ready. He's ready. Okay, this is live. Coming right, to Manny. you from Manny in Florida. <laughs> What's going on, Wednesday Warriors? Manny Gomez here again with another edition of a closer look. But before I get into talking about two comics that I love this week, I want to thank Rikus and Dr. Ben and the shop Captain's Comics Toys End for giving me this excellent chance to talk to you guys about comics. So let's get into the books. First book I'm going to talk about is Ant-Man number two, written by Al Ewing, uh, illustrated by Tom Riley, colored by Jordi Belair, and lettered by Corey Petit. Much like Ant-Man number one, Ant-Man number two is focusing on a specific Ant-Man from Marvel's history. In the case of this issue is Eric O'Grady, character that Robert Kirkman wrote back in the early 2000s in a series called The Irredeemable Ant-Man. Now, Eric O'Grady is unlike other Ant-Man in that he's not really a superhero. Uh, 
In his civilian identity, he is a low-level shield analyst uh, who crunches numbers and pushes pencil, pencils, sits in, a, sits in a cubicle. Like, he's not an agent by any stretch of the imagination. He's just someone that happens to work for shield. So when he originally comes across this Ant-Man suit, he steals it so that he can, you know, sort of commit pretty crimes, maybe a bit of fraud, a few cons. Like, he's not looking to take over the world. He's just kind of pulling some scumbag stuff. Which makes him a fun character. And I really knew nothing about Eric when I started reading uh, this issue. And I was able to jump right in. I mean, a lot of it has to do with how clever Al Ewing writes the issue. Uh, this issue begins with an actual ant narrating and sort of catching you up in case you didn't read issue, issue one. And it's funny. The ant, the ant has a lot of personality and uh, does a great job of uh, catching you up and introducing you into who Eric is. And the story just takes off right away. And it's a lot of fun. Tom Riley's art, once again, fantastic. I first noticed Tom Riley when he drew a Thing miniseries a few, a few months back for Marvel. And uh, his sort of fusion of the simplicity of like old school Silver Age art uh, with like sort of modern forms of, uh, of, um, of layouts and giving everything a Christmas, Christmas really stood out to me and I became an instant fan. So I told myself anything that Tom Riley draws, I'm going to at least give a chance. So I gave a chance to issue one, loved it. And I'm going to continue giving it because issue two is, I, I say, even more fun than issue one. And uh, either one is really a great starting point. So if you missed issue one and your shop uh, only has issue two, you can still grab it. The, uh, the writing has a, has, does a great job of catching you up. Like I said, you got this ant talking to you at the beginning that sets you up for the story. So you can jump right in. And you're going to be grabbed by the, by the art. Al, um, Tom Riley's art is fantastic. And when you throw on... Jordi Belair's colors and uh, you know Jordi is one of the most fantastic colors working in comics today the two together everything just jumps off the page um, it's it's one of the better comics that Marvel is drawing now it's refreshingly not involved with any of the big crossovers so even if you're just sort of like a casual Ant-Man fan or a fan of different periods in Marvel's history you can grab this comic you can read it and you'll have a lot of fun with it highly recommended the other issue I want to talk about uh, this week is also Ant-related, and it's Ant number 5 by Eric Larson, published by Image Comics. Now, the uh, Ant property has a very sort of crazy history in comics. I, I, I don't even really know the total up and down of it. I do know that Ant was originally created by a creator named Mario Gully, and at some point Mario sold the property over to Eric, and Eric has sort of played with it over the years but has never really jumped into an entire ant series like he has recently and like i said this is the fifth issue so eric has been doing this for about five months now now eric is balancing this with his savage dragon miniseries which i think has hit a bit of a slow period it's not coming out monthly a lot of it i think has to do with issues that eric was having creatively with savage dragon but a lot of it probably has to do with him putting his energy into ant now what sets ant apart from other projects that Eric has done, is his choice of, uh, of coloring in this series. It's colored um, by a gentleman named Mike Torres, and it's a flat-colored approach to the, to the images, which gives it a total different feel from uh, the previous stuff that you might be familiar with with Eric Larson. And it's, it's not any better or worse, it's just different. And it goes to show you that, um, you know, although Eric has a very distinct style to his, uh, to his drawings, He's also pretty versatile, and his art can be a lot of fun. And, and that's, again, what this issue is. It's a lot of fun. And number five um, features Malcolm Dragon, like the current Savage Dragon character that Eric is writing and drawing in the Savage Dragon miniseries. And it also has a guest appearance by Spawn. We all know who Spawn is, the great character created by Todd McFarlane that also has his own series from Image. So this is sort of a team-up issue and uh, is sort of creating, you know, a little bit of a continuity for Ant in the, you know, sort of loose sort of continuity that Image has had, you know, with Spawn popping in and Savage Dragon and vice versa. And it's a lot of fun. Uh, if, you're, if you're a big fan of Eric Larson and have been reading Savage Dragon, you know what to expect from Ant. There's a lot of humor. There's a lot of action. You're going to see a lot of Kirby sort of dynamics going on. And, um, and it's just a really solid, fun read and just great fun comics um so yeah i guess that's the theme for this week it's just fun comics and they both happen to be ant related which was a coincidence because i sort of did not 
expect to pick these two out of the stack I bought at my shop this week to be the ones I enjoyed the most, but they were. And when I realized they were both ant related, I said, it's got to be a sign, right, guys? So anyway, those are the two books that I like this week. Um, there's other books, fantastic books. So don't hesitate to go to your comic shop. You know, it's important. Read comics, buy comics, support comics. And again, Ant-Man number two, Ant number five. Those are my two picks for the week. I'll be back next week with more comics. And um, I'll see you guys at the comic shop, all right? See you on Wednesday, guys. Thanks, Manny Gomez, for that segment. And it's been my favorite for a long time. You know, they're... The only thing that, that Manny didn't cover is he didn't he didn't get to covering that if there was any truth to the rumor that, that Josh Icorn would be is in the running to play Ant in a potential live action series. Ooh, that'd be cool. I I'm excited for that. That's what I'm saying. I I would love to, to get to the bottom of that. I that's what I'm saying. I wanna nail down these rumors. Mm -hmm. Put an end to them one way or the other. Right. <laughs> that's the end of today's episode. But if you're looking to for a pull list, uh, League of Comic Geeks, you can it's an app you can download, put on your phone, and link us to uh, our store, Comic Book Geeks. That's right. That's what our I League use. Of, um, Captain's Comics, Toys, and link us to that there. Um, sync to your participating local comic shop. Search and add titles to your pull list is a one-time thing or. A subscription is every single issue. Right, right. And then uh, you can track your collection and make sure you get your comic books what you want from our store. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. That's that's what I'm saying. That's what I use. Uh, supposed to be follow what's coming out each week. Has a nice description, links to all the different stuff. Shows you characters in each different uh, in each different book that's coming out. Mm -hmm. Explains who they are. This week I found out Teth Adam. Is is Black Adam? Oh, or Dwayne Johnson? That's what okay. <laughs> his his name's Teff. His name is Teff Adam. That's good to know. <laughs> Little tidbit going into the movie theater soon. That's right. Um, we are located at six sixty two fifty four South Main Street, Ashbilla in North Kingsville, Ohio. Right. And uh, don't forget to uh, subscribe, like, and hit the bell. That's right. Till then, read, keep reading more comics. See you next Wednesday. All right. You see this? Thing?